Hi, everyone. Welcome to Kiki and Kibitz. It's Mary, and I'm here with this week's edition of 90 Days and 900 Seconds, Season 10, Tell All Part 1. Yes, it is finally Tell All Time, the WrestleMania of 90 Day. And yes, we are finally here after a really long fucking season. So if I was going to give this part one a grade, I would give it a solid B, okay? Let's set 900 seconds on the timer and let's hop right into it. So we start off, Nikki is the first one to arrive, okay? She's really pissed off at Igor. Why, you may ask? You thought they broke up? Yeah, me too. But it turns out that um, she went to go visit him in Moldova two months ago for his birthday. And she thought everything was okay. And she got a phone call the night before the tell-all. And um, basically, Igor broke up with her again. Okay? And we're going to get more into this. But she's telling, you know, the staff as she arrives, you know, that she's not okay today, but she's going to hang in there. And does my hair look cute? Now, next, Jasmine and Gino arrive. And Gino's like, you know, when it comes to tell-all time, things get really tense. And it always seems to be Jasmine versus me or me versus Jasmine. But I'm ready to uh, defend myself. So don't fuck with me. And when he said, don't fuck with me, he had like this huge smile on his face, like a seventh grader, I'm sorry, a seven-year-old who just cursed and didn't get caught by his parents, okay? So now, Ashley and Manuel and her sage enter the room. Ashley has dropped 101 pounds, and she decided that Everybody needed a little bit of saging. So she lights her sage. And my husband, the construction worker who was watching this with me, said, how the heck is she doing that? And the smoke alarms and the fire alarms are not going off. They're indoors and she just lit something and she's waving it around. Why aren't there fire alarms going off? I'm like, I don't know. But yeah, she was saging everybody back there. Gina was like, sage me, baby, sage me. Okay, and then Nikki and her dress enters the room, okay? And I'm going to refer to them as two separate things because it was like Nikki and her dress following her, okay? um, She was dressed up like some crazy looking Barbie in this hot pink fuchsia dress that like had a trail, I, I don't even know, okay? But- Igor said it reminded him of the Phoenix. We're going to get into that in a second, okay? Did you know Jasmine and Nikki are online besties? Yeah, neither did I. Okay, so Nikki starts telling them how she went back to Moldova two months ago for Igor's birthday party, and she thought everything was okay, and now Igor dropped a big bomb on her. Guess what? He is no, he is not trans attracted. Excuse me. After all this time, you just figured out you aren't trans attracted. Okay. So now Ashley starts to sage Nikki because Nikki's crying. Okay. And um, next Sam and Citra walk into the room and Jasmine's like, oh my God. Citra, you're so beautiful. And then Jasmine, you know, says in her little confessional thing, I was surprised to see Sam and Citra walk in. I thought he would be in jail and Citra would be back home in Indonesia. Wow. Okay. Then we have Clayton and Annalie. And as soon as they sit down, Manuel's like, dude, I have a question for you. What is up with your mommy in the closet? How could you put your mommy in a closet? And Jasmine's like, yeah, I agree. I find that so crazy, disrespectful on so many levels. And Clayton, I give it to him, held his own and said, well, you know, I didn't want it to be that way. But my mother put herself in a position where she had to basically live with me. 
I had a one bedroom apartment. What was I going to do? Hey, mom, take the bedroom. It just happened to work out that way. And um, I give it to him. He put his foot down, even though Jasmine's saying, oh, this is not normal. He put his foot down. He explained the situation. And that's it. Now, Devin and Nick come in. And Devin, she has a glow up. She has dropped a significant amount of weight. And she was wearing red bottom shoes. Did you guys see that? Okay, she was wearing red bottoms. And Devin was just glad to be there and to have an opportunity to speak up for herself because she felt like on the show, she was a little bit too quiet. And Nick is like, I'm happy to be here. I'm just not going to take any shit from losers. If any losers try to talk shit at me, I'm not going to deal with it. And I'm like, wow, Nick, you're kind of sassy. So uh, Jasmine's like, oh, look, we're all one big happy family. And let's go on stage and tear each other apart. So Sean comes out. Everyone's like, hi, Sean. And then she she starts to tell all. And she starts off with saying hi to everybody. And she's like, hi, Sophie and Rob. Sophie, I love the new hair color. Why did you decide to change your hair? And she's like, a change was needed and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Justin. Nikki, I love your dress. Why don't you model it for us? So Nikki gets up, does a couple of twirls, and Igor is like, oh, you are so beautiful. You remind me of the phoenix. And then this is where Ashley and Jasmine decide to call him out. Okay, and they're like, dude, stop playing mind games with her. Okay, just last night you were trying to break up with her and Nikki was crying backstage even before we started. And Sean is like, really? We're going to get into this later. So now, Ashley, okay? Sean is like, Ashley, you look so beautiful. You've dropped so much weight. Did you do a tarot card reading before, you know, you came to the tell-all? And this is where Ashley is like, no, actually, I was hoping I could do a tarot card reading for everyone. And Gino immediately starts to shake. Jasmine is like, why are you shaking, dude? And he's like, I'm not shaking. I have no reason to shake. But yeah, he was shaking. So Ashley shuffles the cards, Okay. If I had a deck of cards in my house, I would be shuffling a deck of cards for you guys. But unfortunately, I have no cards in my house. I don't even have Uno cards, okay? So the first card is the Knight of Swords. Whatever's in the, whatever is being done in the dark will come out quickly. So if anybody's hiding a secret here, it's going to come out quickly. And we see later on it does. The second card is the judgment card, okay? Everyone here will have an opinion. You may not like their opinion, but everyone here is going to have an opinion. Then we have the four of wands coming in upside down. And Ashley is like, whoa. Okay, this last card means some people are going to leave here unsettled, okay? Whether it's, you know, because of their relationship or just unsettled because they didn't like the opinions of others. But there are people that are going to leave here unsettled. And I'm like, whoa. Okay. Anyway, so Clayton and Annalie, they have moved to Oklahoma. And guess what? Mom has moved with them. Hi, Jasmine and Gino. Jasmine. Have How have you been adjusting? Being a Michigan girl, Sean says. I know it's really, really cold in Michigan. And Jasmine's like, I'm not adjusting. I'm just trying to survive one day at a time. Okay. Devin and Nick are still in love. And Nick is like, it's been okay living with Devin's parents. I've been a good boy. Okay. Sam and his horny self got Citra pregnant. 
She is 12 weeks pregnant. And Citra's like, I know it happened fast. He has strong swimmers. I think it's because his pipe is backed up for too long. So now let's get into the meat. We're starting off with Rob and Sophie. And guess what? They moved to Texas right after they got married. And their place actually has an inside bathroom. So yay for Rob. So now Sean asked the rest of the cast, if not having a bathroom inside, could this be a deal breaker for you? Okay. And um, let's see. Amanda Lee says, if it's like a temporary situation, love can conquer all. And Clayton's all like, oh, Justin's like, look, at least on the bright side. You're not shitting where you eat, basically, okay? You get to take the crap out of the house. It won't smell up the house. You know, Sam pointed out that that's how we started with outhouses. So, you know, but Nikki is like, Igor, please shut the fuck up. Like, do not ask him anything, please. So now they bring up the sexing scandal. And he claims the worst thing that he responded back to these random videos that he received from random women that he doesn't even know their names or nothing like that. The worst thing that he replied was send me more. Okay. So now Igor. Okay. This is where Igor speaks up again. He, he inserts his opinion Okay, that getting these random videos, it's just like a video game. It's just like putting on VR glasses and it's just a game. You know, he has no intention on hooking up with any, any of these women, Sophie. So technically it's not cheating. And Nikki is really like, Igor, shut the fuck up, please. Who invited you here? Okay, so now let's bring in Claire. And I just want to say, that these two, Rob and Sophie, have no chemistry. They don't even look like they like each other. The way that they're sitting together on the couch, I'm like, whoa, do you guys even fucking like each other? Are you guys even having sex? Because I don't see any chemistry between them. So now we bring out mom, and that's it. Rob gets triggered by Claire. And I think Claire gets triggered by Rob. And the two of them bring out the worst in each other, okay? So now Claire is like, I basically think he's a knob because he had all this time to find another place that wasn't in the hood or at least clean up the place that he was in. He didn't even clean up the place that he was in. And my sweet darling princess was moving into the shithole, okay? And secondly... Who the hell think paid your rent while you guys lived in Mexico, Rob? You have plenty of time to get all your shit together. And Rob just explodes, okay? He is basically like, you know something? I know that Sophie is always going to choose me, choose her mom over me. So basically, he's like, you talk, pot call the kettle black, Claire, Okay. Talk about somebody trying to yell at me about not being responsible and not having a job and bringing all these men home. Hot corner the kettle black, Claire. And I didn't like Rob's energy towards his mother-in-law, but I didn't like her energy towards him either. I guess she wants to protect her daughter, but her daughter already married him. So she might as well accept him and be, be kinder to him and stop calling him a nub. Even though she may think he's a nub, stop calling it to his face. I mean, that's a lot fucked up, okay? So, um, yeah, Rob's big thing, okay, is that he doesn't get acknowledgement from Sophie that all the things that he did do how he stepped up and got them an apartment in Texas and how he's doing all these things and did all these things. He got her over here. She doesn't appreciate it. And this is where Jasmine puts her two cents in. And Jasmine is like, I hate that idea that the Americans have when they bring over a foreigner 
that we're supposed to be in a state of eternal like gratitude, you know? And Rob is like, no, I'm not asking for her eternal gratitude. Just basically like, Rob, you did a good job. I love you. Like something. And Sophie's like, well, you don't show me that that you love me. Like, I get that, you know, you did a lot and you got us a new apartment and whatever, but you still need to take me out on dates. You still need to like make me feel like I'm special. So basically everyone was attacking Claire. Okay. I'm going to call it what, what I think it was. Okay. Because they were all like, Claire, you know, you need to mind your business and not get involved and whatever. And I'm just like, Claire is never going to mind her business. When it comes to her little girl, Sophie, she is never going to mind her business. And, you know, she's always going to have that one eye on Rob. Like Ashley's mom, and we're going to get into them in a second. Ashley's mom always said that she's going to have that one eye open on Manuel. So I don't think any of them should have tried to tell Claire that she should, you know, step back. Now it's lunchtime and Rob is like, Rob's annoyed. Okay. Rob's like, she's never going to choose me over her mom. He feels like he's, he's standing on a pedestal alone and Sophie is never going to choose his side. And you know, th this is bullshit. This is bullshit. Okay. And Rob is like annoyed and Sophie is sitting in there saying that, you know, basically the same thing that's, and she understands that she should have Rob's side, but she's not going to, okay? No matter what she says, she's always going to choose her mom over Rob. And I like the thing that Devin said, okay? Devin finally spoke up. I was like, whoa, yeah, that's right. She's here. Devin said that in public, you should be the biggest advocate for your husband. Even if you think he is wrong AF, you save that conversation but behind closed doors. And you know something? That is how my husband and I roll, okay? He could think I'm being a psychotic bitch. I could think that he is wrong AF, but we will back up each other in public, but behind closed doors, we will have that conversation. So I totally agree with Devin, okay? Now, Sophie says, that all Rob does is tell these half truths to make her mad, to make her look bad. And I'm just like, you know something? These guys aren't even going to last a year. And did I mention? They don't even look like they like each other. So anyway, moving on to Ashley and Manuel. Okay. So now Ashley thinks that the rain was a good luck charm. They're still getting to know each other. And um, Manuel doesn't really consider Ashley to be a witch, okay? Because in his eyes, a witch intends to do bad stuff. So Adelie asks him, to have any of the rituals, et cetera, worked on him? And Manuel's like, you know, I believe that if you believe in it, it will work. And now this is how we turn into the sex magic conversation. So apparently... You could buy a penis candle and um, drench it with your penis, with your partner's semen and cover it in some specific herbs and burn it. And you will have the best sex, get the love that you wanted, et cetera, et cetera. I am like, whoa, thanks, but no thanks. Okay. Now, here we bring out mom and sister. And when Sean asked, Mom, do you trust him? She was like, uh, no. And I'm going to tell you why. Because he came here on a lie. He didn't tell his mama. He didn't tell his children that he was coming over here. So, no, I don't trust him. And I'll give you another reason why I don't trust him. They're always fighting over money, okay? I could bring my daughter a coffee and he's like, oh my God, you're so spoiled. But meanwhile, he expects a certain amount of money to go home to Ecuador. And because my daughter is the only one that's working, when he, he does, when she doesn't send enough, she gets all stressed out and calls me. 
And then I wind up giving her money to give to him, for him to give to his family. Are you following this? So no, I don't like him. I don't trust him. And I'm going to keep one eye open on him. And then Jasmine explains. Now, this is one part that Jasmine made sense. And I'm actually glad she was there. Okay. She explains to the mom and the sister that his brain is wired a different way. Okay. Because when you're poor in a third world country, poverty in a third world country is totally different than from poverty in America. And she is absolutely right. Poverty in a third world country, like she said, it's a privilege to even eat sometimes. So, Manuel is here, the country where we buy Starbucks, even though we have a coffee maker in our house. And he feels guilty, okay? And his brain just isn't wired to like take this all in. He feels guilty because of his family and the conditions that they're living in. And that's when mom was like, you know, I'm seeing it from another perspective. Thank you, Jasmine. Like, I never understood this. And Manuel just keeps saying, I don't want to be a bother. I don't want to be a bother. And now sister and mom are all like, you know, we have this new perspective on Manuel. Thank you so much, Manuel. You have a family here. You know, we're here to help you. You don't have to take it on or all upon yourself anymore. Being the oldest of four siblings. Manuel, we're here, but I'm going to keep an eye on you. Okay, so now, the next thing that they bring up with them is, uh, oh, before this, they showed how Manuel and Jasmine, I'm sorry, Manuel and Jasmine, Manuel and Ashley like to solve their problems by having sex. Okay. And most of the cast agreed. Hey, why not? If it's working for you guys now, why the hell not? And I'm just like, okay, whatever. So now we have viewer questions. And I'm like, mm hmm. If you guys watch Housewives and on, you know, the reunions of Housewives, when it, it's, a, it's a joke, a half joke, that whenever Andy Cohen reads an outrageous tweet or an outrageous viewer question it's really his question okay which i'm thinking these were producer questions even the video call i'm thinking that it was producers okay or friends of the producers or something or another because i didn't see anything and you guys know i am all over social media i did not see a damn thing on facebook instagram or X, Twitter, whatever the hell they call it now, Reddit or TikTok, asking for questions for the tell -all. Just saying. So now, the first question. Sophie, how do you turn off the bi part of your brain when you are with Rob? And basically, Sophie's like, well, that's a good question. But when you're truly in love with someone, you won't be looking for anybody else. The same thing goes, you know, for like me looking for another man. Why would I be looking for, an, for another woman if I'm truly happy in my relationship? Makes sense. Next, we have a video question, okay? Now, they want to know if Clayton a guinea pig when he visit Peru I'm like, yeah, sure. I even knew the answer to the question even before they, they finished asking it. And if he didn't, would he ever consider eating it? Okay. Adelie answers that question straight off the bat. He will never, he will never eat a guinea pig. Okay. That's it. Clayton's like, yeah, I can't do it. You know, I've seen it on the menu in Peru. She even eats it now but I can't do it myself, okay? Then Rob asks Annalie, would you consider eating one of, you know, one of Clinton's, Clayton's guinea pigs? 
Okay. Have you ever looked at them and said, you know, I think I want to throw this one on a pan. I'm like, God damn, Rob, shut up. And she's like, no, I could never do that. Guinea pig is delicious, but I would never eat my husband's guinea pigs. Good to know. So now the next question, okay, from a 90 day viewer, who would you have a kid with in the entire 90 day universe except for your partner? Nikki points, and at first they thought she was pointing to Gino, but no, she was pointing to Jasmine. And Jasmine's like, hey, I had I've had girlfriends before. I would be totally willing to carry Nikki's baby and lick her kitty. And everyone's like, whoa. Okay. Gino and Rob would have a baby together. Okay. He was Rob's choice. Sophie's girl crush is Yara. And Igor would love to lay the pipe down on Jasmine to show her that Russians are really good at this. And Jasmine's like, eh, no thanks. So now, speaking of Jasmine, we're moving on to the Gino and Jasmine section, which of course, you know, is filled with drama, okay? So first of all, they are a work in progress. And Jasmine is very grateful and thankful to Gino that he took his hat off for some of their wedding pictures and meant so much to her. So now, Sean jumps right into the drama. So Jasmine, speaking of the wedding dress, Gino sent you $4,000 for a wedding dress and um, you spent it on butt implants. And Sam the whole time is sitting there like, what the hell? I'm just thinking 5K per butt, like, butt cheek like come on so jasmine is like the only regret that i have okay is that i didn't get them bigger i wish i got them bigger so now the dane questions okay why would he give you two thousand dollars jasmine if he wasn't getting anything and jasmine's like he's a friend of mine He's in love with someone and he, you know, has good values. Unlike you, Sam, who would think something like this, okay? He has good values and he is just my friend, okay? And Rob is like, but not for nothing, Jasmine, okay? I just want to tell you that whenever you guys have arguments, you're always throwing Dane in his face. How do you think that makes him feel? And then... Gino speaks up and Gino's like, yeah, that has a lot to do with why we don't have a great sex life. Her horrible words affect me in the bedroom, okay? So now we have the lip gloss controversy, okay? It seems like that they're just trying to dig Jasmine into a big hole, but as you're going to see soon, they turn it around on Gino, okay? So now Jasmine finds the lip gloss. We all remember this. She's hysterical, screaming in the car. And Gino's like, I did nothing wrong. I've had this car for six and a half years. It could have been anyone that dropped the lip gloss. All I know is that I did not cheat on Jasmine. And actually, Sophie and Rob had a similar situation Rob comes out with a lipstick or whatever and said, here, you left your lipstick in my place. And Sophie was like, that's not mine. But Rob was like, as you can see, I had nothing to worry about because I just gave it to her. I was like, hey, your lipstick. If I was hiding something, why would I do that? So most of the cast agrees that, you know, Gino's story is totally plausible, okay? That the lip gloss could have been dropped by anyone. Now... We're going to get into the bachelor party. And this is where Sharp and TLC throw Gino all the way under the bus. Okay. So now Jasmine was like, I had a bachelorette party. It was calm. We had no strippers or anything like that. And Gino's like, uh, do I have to remind you that when I first got to Panama, you had a party and you had the stripper on top of you. 
And Jasmine flips the fuck out, says, that was my divorce party. And I didn't walk into a fucking strip club. And Clayton, with the line of the tell-all, says, hmm, maybe you should have spent two thousand that two thousand dollars towards anger management classes. And Jasmine's like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. The whole cast is sitting there like, hmm. Hmm. So now this is where they throw him all the way under the bus. And they show unseen footage of the bachelor party and I'm like you guys really really want to get Gino killed so in his unseen footage Gino is having the oh my god he is having the moment of his life okay he is letting it rain he is has his face in between boobs chicks that are that are topless are hugging Gino Gino's loving it they bring him up on stage for a lap dance using his own belt, okay? I mean, Gino was living his best life. And Jasmine watching this unseen footage was all like, <laughs> please, Sean, take it off. I don't want to see it anymore. <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, during the unseen footage, Devin is covering Nick's eyes like, you don't need to see any of this shit, boy. Okay, so while Jasmine is losing her shit, Gino is just sitting there with a big old smile, smiling at the memories, couldn't care less that his wife is having a meltdown next to him because he thinks that Jasmine is overreacting. He didn't do anything wrong. He repeats it a hundred times. I didn't do anything wrong. Okay, it's a bachelor party. This is what you're supposed to do at bachelor parties. I didn't do anything wrong. Okay, Jasmine has a total fucking meltdown, walks off the stage. Oh no, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry, I'm going a little bit too fast. Then, then TLC totally digs Jasmine Gino's grave by finding one of the strippers. How could I almost forget that part? They dragged out Daisy the stripper. And yeah, Daisy was trying to cover for him. Daisy was like, oh, he was, you know, he seemed kind of awkward. I just wanted to hang out with his family. That's not the Gino we saw in that unseen footage making it rain on the stripper's butt. But, you know, he was awkward. And Jasmine is flipping the fuck out. Okay? She is like, she, she like, those women were half naked and you were hugging them. If I would have seen this before, I would have never married you. Oh, my God, Gino, you don't look at me like that. You don't desire me like that. You don't compliment me like that. I can't believe this. As Daisy the stripper is sitting there like, mm-hmm. Um, can I end this Zoom meeting now? I have like places to go, things to do. And um, Gino just keeps repeating. I didn't do anything wrong. It was a bachelor party. I didn't do anything wrong. And Jasmine storms off the stage. And then Nikki follows her. And Jasmine is sobbing in Nikki's arms. <laughs> Making sure her face is covered so we... Don't see that she doesn't have any tears. Nikki's rubbing her back. And this is how we end it. And let's see how we pick it up next week. Thank you so much, guys, for watching me. Please subscribe if you don't already. Hit that like button. Share my video with a friend or 10. And please consider joining my membership. Thank you so much. And see you next time. Bye, everyone.